Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video covering my user experience with the Asus ROG Cetra True Wireless Speed Novas. I know that's quite a mouthful, um, but you guys can see that just overall, aesthetically speaking, the carrying case or recharge pack does come with the Asus ROG logo. It is very uh, sleek, very angled. It does look overall aesthetically pleasing. When you open it up, though, you will get hit. You will get smacked with that RGB, that gaming flavor from the ROG branding. You got it on the earbuds themselves as well as the case. But the RGB is very vibrant, looks awesome. And if you're somebody who likes that gamer aesthetic, I certainly think that you will appreciate this. It does say, for those who dare, on the bottom here in small little font... I think it's a nice touch and overall the battery case or uh, carrying case slash recharge case, it actually does charge the earbuds quite quickly, which if you turn off RGB and you turn off ANC, you do get a little bit over 40 hours of battery life. This is the Speed Nova dongle and this connects to your PC via USB-C and the latency here is exceptionally good. I don't notice any lag on gunshots or gameplay footsteps, etc. So if you're somebody who wants to have these for that casual use case scenario, transfer them over to a competitive gaming type experience or multiplayer first person shooter. I don't think you're going to notice any uh, uh, inherent lag that is going to affect your gameplay whatsoever. It would be very hard from a human perspective to notice any lag using uh, the ROG Cetra wireless speed novas. Overall, if you take these out, um, the connection is flawless with the Speed Nova dongle. It connects very quickly, noticed by Windows, and you just have to, of course, swap over to uh, that as your primary audio source. The fit of these, they actually are quite comfortable. They do hang down the ear a little bit, as you can see. And I, I think that one of the issues with the overall comfort, just the nozzle itself, is on the... Um, kind of small side, so I never really felt like I got that great of a fit. I always had this feeling like they were hanging down or about to fall out of my ear. But once you get used to that, they actually do fit quite nicely. I can run with these. I can shake my head as fast as humanly possible, um, at least as fast as I can. And the earbuds remain in place. They don't fall out. But I just found myself always feeling, even after using these for... Uh, over over two weeks now, um, just a sensation as though they were falling out of my ear. So I always found myself touching them, which uh, does become a little bit of an issue because then it affects, um, it can turn on a song or turn off a song. There are touch effects on the left side and right side. For instance, on the left earbud, if I hit it once, um, it can start or stop a song as well as the right side. If I hit it twice, it can change the ANC mode so I can get ambient noise. And the ambient noise is actually quite nice. It allows you to hear, if you're somebody who is looking for an open back IEM or an open back earbud, that essentially filters in the outside noise around you and you can actually hear almost as though you're on a even more so of an open back headphone. Um, I hear my fans blowing on my PC. I can hear my daughter, what she's doing in the room. So that's a nice effect if you're somebody who is um, playing on a console, playing on the PC, and you need to hear the things that are around you. The other ANC mode is noise cancellation. The noise cancellation, I think, is fantastic. If I put on a song, um, I literally can't hear myself opening and closing a door right in front of me, for instance. So I think the noise cancellation works quite well, actually. Um, and that ambient noise effect, again, is quite nice as well. The other features that I would say, just from a user experience, um, my house is uh, quite big, um, not you know massive. Um, I do have an upstairs, I have a first level, and then, of course, my backyard. Everywhere in my house, these work flawlessly. If I go into my garage with a basically concrete wall in front of me, um, I do lose a little bit of the signal. I can still get a good signal, but you start to hear the audio coming through as though it is not crackling, but but like basically fading off, um, getting a little bit like robotic-y of a signal. If I go anywhere in my house, though, these work flawlessly. I can go upstairs, anywhere on the upstairs level, anywhere on the downstairs level. If I go outside, 
the audio is, um, it begins to get that effect again of a little bit of that robotic signal coming through or almost like it's cutting out. So I would say the range on these, if you are concerned about the range, it is phenomenal. If you're somebody who wants to have a wireless headset or a wireless bud and you want to go anywhere in your house, go to the kitchen while still talking to your boys on Discord, you're going to get that with uh, these. Um, uh, of course, your house, your layout, the um, material in your walls could have an effect, but I just had absolutely no issue whatsoever. So that covers the fit, the um, overall distance, the aesthetic. Really, the only other thing that I have is, um, I think I already mentioned the battery life, but with um, the um, ambient noise or noise cancellation off, with the RGB off, you do get a little bit over 40 hours. If you ever start getting low on battery, the rechargeable case here um, actually does charge the earbuds rather quickly. So um, they are quite nice in that respect in terms of a um, just overall user experience and um, ease of use. Now, the in-game performance, I think, is um, going to be one of the biggest factors here. These are, and let me open Armory Create because you guys are going to have to see um, really all of the things that you can customize here because if you do want a good gaming experience, let me plug in the Speed Nova dongle so that they are recognizable on my PC. Um, but putting in the dongle, they will appear on Armory Create and you will unfortunately have to download Armory Create. I know some people absolutely hate this program. I don't really uh, mind one way or the other. It's kind of like, you know, you set your settings and then just close out of Armory Create. You can uninstall Armory Create, etc. But <clears throat> this earbud does not sound good to me, uh, either for music or for gaming unless you turn Dirac on. Dirac makes the audio feel more organic. With it off, it just feels too stale, too bland, just too um, overly flat. I can't even call it neutral. It is just flat, boring, and just not exciting in any way, shape, or form. I don't feel anything in the frequency range really excels with Dirac off. Um, and I think the gaming performance with Dirac off is... Um, suboptimal. And with it off, just the default settings, taking these out of the box, one of the things you'll notice almost immediately is the audio almost doesn't even get to an adequate level to be able to hear the things that are happening around you. You get a good sense out of the box, not changing any settings. You get a good sense of imaging. You can hear things that are happening around you. You get a decent sense of depth, but it's nothing that smacks you in the face. It's nothing that you're going to get an accurate read of how far somebody is in front of you. You'll get a general sense, um, but I don't think you're really getting a effect of what we see on the Wallhack certified IEM tier list on this channel. We don't get that effect of what we're looking for, for being able to literally accurately read where somebody is along a path in a 360 degree radius uh, with these in the default settings. These do get infinitely better with direct turned on. The uh, sound in general becomes more organic feeling. It actually sounds quite good, but it is a very bassy experience. So I think if you are somebody who's willing to tinker with the EQ, you might have a better effect with these, lowering some of that sub bass and mid bass and not having uh, quite as much bleed into the mids. But interestingly enough, even with all of that sub bass and mid bass impact, um, and when you turn on voice clarity, I just have voice clarity in my settings on 20. And with voice clarity on 20, it actually pulls out the mids very well. The mids actually separate out from that very boomy and bloated sub bass and mid bass. So keep in mind, there are just so many settings from a software perspective and just hardware encoding that you can actually change to make these sound quite good. In terms of the other settings, virtual surround sound, I have that off. I found when I turned virtual surround sound on, things became a little bit too reverby. Even talking to people on Discord, it was almost like I uh, was placed in a hallway and the audio was bouncing off the walls. I just didn't find it to be quite that good. Reverb I have off, it's kind of the same thing. It's just you have to turn the slider and then it kind of affects 
like a room that you're in and you just hear this echo, it's um, quite bad. I would never use it in game. Uh, base boost, I have that off, but when you actually fool around with the slider, you can actually move it a little bit if you have it on and make the base feel a little bit fuller and less bloated. Um, but if you go too far, of course, it's going to affect things in game and will affect things in music as well. Uh, voice clarity, we already went over that. Compressor, I just leave that off. A and C, I do keep that on. I do use the noise cancellation because it kind of cuts out all that uh, noise from the fans sitting next to me from my PC, which I do enjoy. Dirac, we went over that, um, makes it feel again more organic. I do have an equalizer on right now that I use for Apex Legends. I find that the EQ is almost necessary because again, without the EQ, things are very bassy, bass bloated. You get um, certainly the emphasis there and the rumble that kind of prohibits good separation and layering kind of prohibits an apex in particular hearing people sliding and climbing um, a lot of things in that presence region so what i've done is i've lowered the sub base a little bit and then getting into the mid base um, a little bit higher than the sub and then moving into the presence region i've elevated that a little bit where um, i find there to be the popping of shield cells shield batteries um, sliding, things like that that are a little bit brighter um, and does affect the stage as well. I do find with virtual surround sound, though, the audio does get a little bit louder with it off. Things, I, I just wish they got a tiny, tiny, tiny bit louder. But if you're somebody who's willing to tinker, you can get these to sound quite good depending on the game that you're playing. You're just going to have to really be somebody who is willing to take the time to do it. The microphone on these is absolutely horrendous. I will, uh, it's actually a bone conduction microphone, I believe. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a sound test of the microphone, but it's just absolutely abysmal. All right, I've got the earbuds in. This is a sound test with the microphone. I think it just sounds absolutely horrendous. If you are somebody who's going to play around a little bit with the settings, I just turned noise gate on. I turned perfect voice on right there as I was talking. Um, but yeah, the microphone is definitely in need of a uh, little bit of TLC. And that takes me to the next portion of my video. This is the Asus ROG Carnix. This is a USB cardioid microphone retailing at $180. You can see it has that RGB panel on the front and I'm recording on it right now. I'm about probably a foot and a half away from the microphone. But I've got the RGB panel on front. It has a one touch unmute de uh, designated by green and red. You've got a knob here for the mic volume, the headphone volume, and overall it's just embroidered in ROG, Republic of Gamers. And if you like that look and it matches your setup, uh, certainly it will flow nicely. It's got nice shock absorption there on the actual stand itself and you can take it off the stand and put it on a typical boom arm, but I've been reading that people have had a little bit of difficulty doing that. Moving the microphone a little bit closer to my face, um, I do just wanna say that, again, the background noise, it, it just has this feeling, this vibe of you're almost on just a very good webcam mic because I just can't get it to not pick up um, some echo around me, some of that room, some of that ambient noise. I have noise gate on at around 80. I have perfect voice on and turning perfect voice off. This is what it sounds like with it off. I think it sounds a little bit better with perfect voice on around 75. I have the high pass filter on and equalizer is on dark, but this is what the, this is what the equalizer sounds like on natural and this is what the equalizer sounds like on bright. I think for my environment and my voice, I prefer dark. There aren't really a whole lot of other settings. You do have side tone, a channel mixer dashboard and channel volume. Overall, not a whole lot to really fiddle with other than, than the lighting settings. I do think the Elgato Wave 3 just takes the cake in terms of performance. I've recorded YouTube videos on the Elgato Wave 3 and um, I just feel that it performs much better than this because I think the sound is more compressed. It sounds better in terms of ambient noise and the sound filtering in. This, um, it just picks up too much. It's not something that I could recommend 
for $180 unless you are, again, trying to stick with a uh, ROG theme. I'm pretty open about my gear, what I main, what I use, and for YouTube videos and gaming, I obviously just cross over and use the same stuff. I've transitioned to an XLR microphone. I use the Electro Voice RE20, if you guys can uh, see it here. And I just find this running through a, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it in the back right, I use a Scarlett 4th Gen Solo, and it's just that set up to me. It, it surpasses the Wave XLR that I used to use. I've had two of those break. I just don't quite know what the deal is with those. Um, but the Scarlett Solo 4th Gen has been working flawlessly for me. And the Electro Voice RE20 for YouTube recordings and crossing over to gaming. It's just a much more professional setup. And if you're going to be spending $180, the Blue Sona, I think, is $270 and you can find a, a, a Scarlet third gen or fourth gen uh, and have just a much more elevated sound quality that for me personally, knowing how I am, um, I would personally say for a little bit higher quality uh, or probably just go for something that I can get a little bit cheaper than the Rob Karnick. So I think it just has to be something that really uh, is you're like a huge Asus fan and you love that ROG uh, theme, that look, and it's going to match your setup. But overall, I think there's just better things on the market. Okay, guys, so that is going to be it for this one. You guys know that follow this channel for audio. I'm more of a stereo audio guy with a nice amp deck and nice pair of IEMs or headphones. If you really want that wireless format, I haven't tested a lot of wireless earbuds. Uh, but with enough tinkering, the Cetra does sound pretty good, and you can use it for that everyday use case scenario and transition into gaming with some decent competitive features. Not something that I think would ever break through on my Wallhack certification tier list, um, but overall, I think it's a something that offers a good crossover, a good transition for anybody that is looking for that. The Raw Carnix, unfortunately, is not something that I would recommend right now. Even listening back through the last clip, there was a lot of clipping and popping. Um, overall, just too much ambient noise and using it on stream and on Discord. I just had a lot of comments that it sounded like a webcam microphone. Um, so hopefully they improve upon it. We'll see a better version maybe in the future. Um, but right now, I think it's in a tough spot, especially priced over the Elgato Wave 3. That's going to be it for this one, though, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. See you guys in the next review. Peace.